Hi, and welcome to worship. My name is Michelle Hopp, and I serve the Point at Inch and Arlington United Methodist Churches, and I hope you've had a good week. I am going to lead you in some worship today, and we're going to continue our study of the Apostles' Creed. We're almost done. We're on our sixth uh, faith statement, and this is about the forgiveness of sins. And it says simply, I believe in the forgiveness of sins. So I'd like to lead you in a prayer. Most merciful God, we confess we have sinned against you in thoughts, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We're truly sorry, and we humbly repent. Amen. So, that part of the Apostles' Creed about forgiveness, a simple sentence. I believe in the forgiveness of sins. So, forgiveness. There's three parts to this. One is, we need to believe that God forgives us for our sins. We also have to learn how to forgive ourselves, and that's not always very easy. We also need to learn how to forgive others. That's not easy either. Forgiveness is a tough topic. I think a lot of people are always interested in hearing about it because it's something we all struggle with. But in order to understand forgiveness, we have to understand sin. So let's review what that means. The original meaning of sin is based on the Greek word hamartia, which means to miss the mark. So, you hunters, you archers, you dart players, and yes, even you curlers. I've learned a little bit about curling. Think about the target you aim at. You pull the trigger, you shoot your arrow, you throw your dart, or you throw your stone. But you not only don't hit, hit the bullseye, you miss the entire target. That's what sin is, missing the target. And all of us sin. Paul wrote in Romans, all have sinned and fall short of God's glory. We're all sinners. But how do we get better? How do we become more like Jesus and sin less? Well, wouldn't it help to know what's in the bullseye? What should we be aiming at? Is there a list somewhere in the Bible of the virtues that God wants us to have? You're in luck. There sure is. Because the Apostle Paul created a list of the qualities that define a person of God. He called them the fruits of the Spirit. And remember, the Holy Spirit lives within us. When the Holy Spirit is activated and we're letting it use us, we will have these um, different qualities. So here's the list. The fruit of the Spirit is love. How are you doing with love? Joy. How are you doing with joy? Peace. How are you doing with being peaceful? Patience. Kindness. Goodness. Faithfulness. Gentleness. And self-control. So when I was polling my churches uh, this morning in, in worship, when we had, you know, I, I, I preached this already to them. I'm a little late this week. I apologize. <laughs> Um, but when I asked them what they were having trouble with, you know what they said? Patience, peace, and self-control. Those are the three that I heard the most. So we're going to talk today about self-control, because that's sometimes hard. It's especially hard if you're hungry, if you're tired, if you're like already stressed out to the max, and somebody throws something at you that triggers you. Oh my goodness, that can be really hard. How often do you hit the bullseye of self-control? You know, when we choose not to attack somebody verbally or physically, when we pause before we say something mean or before we post something cruel on social media, then we're exercising self-control. But sometimes that's hard to do. So last month, I had a really busy Sunday. I preached in both my churches, and then I was in charge of um, nursing home worship at one of the local nursing homes. And at that particular nursing home, there's a really kind gentleman who lives there who used to be a Methodist pastor. So I always talk to him, at least an hour, sometimes two hours after hear all his stories. Well, as you can imagine, I was tired. And it was time to go home, probably like four in the afternoon or something, and I was hungry and... Uh, 
I looked down at, when I got in my van, I, I took a look and oh my goodness, I'm almost out of gas. So I needed to go to the nearest Quick Trip because the Arlington Church is uh, selling Quick Trip gas cards to raise some money for the church. So I almost always go there when I'm in the area. So I went to the nearest Quick Trip and it was a small Quick Trip. And I don't know if you've ever been to a small Quick Trip, but there everything's cramped there outside, outside and inside. The parking is so difficult. There aren't enough stalls either to go into the store or, or to get gas. And I had to get gas or I wouldn't have gotten home. And so I found one open gas pump and I had to back into it in order to get my gas. And that went fine. I backed in and then there was this monster truck on the other side parking to go into the store and he couldn't back out because his truck was too big. So I turned my van on, backed it up just a little bit to let him out, and then got out of my car or out of my van and started pumping my gas. Well, all of a sudden, this lady, this Quick Trip employee comes running out of the store. Ma'am, ma'am, you've hit the car behind you. I'm like, oh my gosh, I have? Because I didn't hear anything, I didn't feel anything. And so I got out and looked and sure enough, my license plate was kissing the license plate of the car behind me, but I had no idea if I had done any damage. In the meanwhile, the lady whose car it was that I had hit, she came out of the store after purchasing something and she said, yeah, I didn't, didn't hear or see anything either. And then she flipped out on me. She said, why did you hit my car? And I said, I'm, I'm really sorry. I had no idea I even had, it was an accident. Again, I'm really sorry. So why don't I move my van forward so we can see if there's any damage? She goes, no, I don't want you to do that. Well, when the Quick Trip employee then said, why don't you move your van forward to see if there's any damage? Then the lady thought it was okay. So I pulled my van forward, we looked at it. Um, there, there wasn't any damage, but she kept yelling at me, saying, oh, why did you hit my car? over and over again, I'm not even kidding me. And then she'd flail her arms, ha, ah, ah, ha, you know. She was just in a, in, a, in a fit. She was so mad at me for this. So I need to set the stage a little bit more. Whenever I go to the nursing home, that day I always wear my black United Methodist clergy shirt so that the nursing home people will know who I am and at that nursing home, they have just started a new system where when they check your, your temperature, uh, when you get into the facility, you have to type in your name. They take a picture of you. <laughs> so I had a picture of me and a name tag and it creates a label then. You got to print the label out and then you put it on your, your shirt. So I had my name in huge letters so that the older people could read it with my face, with my clergy shirt. So I was... Um, I wasn't just an average Joe. I was representing the church. So I knew I need to keep it together. And it was so hard with this lady. And the lady just kept on and on. Why did you hit my car? And I kept apologizing. And so finally I said, you know, why don't I write down all my information, my, my name, my contact information, my insurance company, my policy number. That way, if you get home and you find there's anything wrong, you can, you know, we'll take care of it. So she was okay with that. I wrote down everything, gave it to her. And then I said, can I have your name? So I know who's calling if you find something. She goes, you don't need my name. <sighs> All right. That's when I started to have a little problem and my thinking started to go off the target completely. Do you know what I wanted to say to her? I wanted to ask her, have you ever made a mistake before? But I knew that would make it worse, so I just kept my mouth shut. And then do you know what I wanted to do? I wanted to go up to her and grab that piece of paper that had my information on it and just take it away from her. But I didn't do that either. <sighs> So I kept my cool, I apologized again, and then she drove away. So how did I do with that target? How did I do with that target of self-control? Eh, so-so. My behavior was good. My thoughts, 
Eh, that's where I missed the target. They weren't so good, were they? But the Quick Trip employee, she came over to me and then she thanked me. She said, thank you for being kind. That made me feel really good because I had no idea how I was coming across and I was trying so hard to exercise self-control. So that made me feel good. But still, I was having trouble forgiving myself because this woman was so mad at me. Have you ever noticed you have a harder time forgiving yourself if the other person won't forgive you? I've learned that over the years. But God will always forgive us. Jesus, his son, was sent to earth to die for our sins, but he was also known as the friend of sinners. He would att attract huge crowds of people who felt like lost causes, thinking that God would never forgive them because their family and friends didn't, or the lady at Quick Trip. Jesus taught them to pray, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. That's the Lord's in the Lord's Prayer, which we pray every week at my churches. And at the Last Supper, Jesus took the wine and told his disciples, drink from this cup. This is the blood of my covenant poured out for many people so their sins may be forgiven. So when you have Holy Communion, which in our churches is once a month, and you drink that juice, that is to remind you of your forgiveness. And as Jesus hung on the cross, dying in agony, he looked at the people responsible for his crucifixion and he prayed, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. And after his torturous death, he forgave, or during his torturous death, that he's still on the cross here. Do you remember how the thief next to him uh, said, Jesus, remember you, remember me in my kingdom. Do you remember what Jesus said to him? Today, you will be with me in paradise. And then even after Jesus died, and then he was uh, resurrected, he was on earth, remember for how long, in his resurrected body? For 40 days. And during those 40 days, he ate with his disciples. He let them touch him. They, uh, and he mostly did teaching. And this is what, one of the most important things he taught them. He said, the forgiveness of sins must be preached in God's name to all nations. Jesus teaches us we have to tell everybody that God forgives our sins, which is wonderful. But there's more to forgiveness than having God forgive us. We need to forgive ourselves and we need to forgive other people. And that's so hard. You know, sometimes we just ask, why do I have to forgive this person? What they did was absolutely awful. Have you ever been there? I know I have. But the big answer do I, to do I have to forgive is yes. And Jesus tells us why. Jesus said, if you forgive others their sins, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you don't forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your sins. Wow, that's sobering. That got my attention. If I don't forgive other people, God isn't going to forgive me. And I know people who can't forgive. You probably know people who can't forgive. They're filled with bitterness and resentment. They keep replaying the wrongs that were done to them over and over again in their heads. I think of those resentful people as prickly because nobody wants to be around them. They find faults with everything. They hang on to grudges. And so often these prickly people end up alone. There's a saying that I think is really helpful to, to us to remember. It says, holding on to resentment is like drinking poison and hoping the other person gets sick. Who gets sick when we hold on to resentment? We do. It hardly ever affects the other person, at least not much. We really need to get rid of that resentment and learn to forgive. And as I drove home from Quick Trip that day, I felt guilt. I did. I replayed the, replayed the event at the gas station. If only I had looked really carefully when I backed up that second time. You know, if only, if only. It, it was hard. And I knew that God forgave me, but then I started to feel shame. And I've learned over the years, when I start to feel shame, I'm not letting God forgive me. 
And that's something I need to do. So I prayed to God, I said, forgive me. And I knew I'd done everything I could. I made a mistake. I, you know, did what I could to make it better. I feel good now that I feel uh, that I'm forgiven. I may still have ramifications. That lady may still um, call my insurance company. And they'll call me and say, hey, there's a claim against you. And that's okay because I am guilty. But I don't need to feel shame because I've been forgiven. And I pray to God too to please help me not to be angry at this woman for being mean to me because, you know, she may have just been having a bad day. I, I sure have those. And to pray for her to help her to have peace and to learn to forgive herself. I love how the psalmist put it. He says, God's love for us is so great that God forgives us and removes our sins so far away from us as the East is from the West. When you, you make a mistake, when you mess up, when you sin and you pray to God and say, please forgive me, God immediately forgives you and removes your sin as far away from you as the East is from the West. Basically, it doesn't exist anymore. That is the great gift of God of God's forgiveness and the great gift of Jesus' dying on the cross for us. Forgiveness has three parts to it. We need to believe that God forgives us. We need to learn how to forgive ourselves. And we need to forgive other people. I believe in the forgiveness of sins. Now I invite you to say the Apostles' Creed with me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, and today's phrase, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Bless you all, my beautiful people. I hope you have a great week. We'll see you next week.